Well, uh, first of all, let me thank all the speakers have been perfect, 20 minutes each. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, we have five minutes left of normal time before the session's due to end. We've been granted a flexibility of 10 minutes, so a quarter of an hour altogether. So are there any burning questions out there? If so, please keep them as short as possible. Paul Davidson. that risk involves ergodic stochastic processes and uncertainty involves non-ergodic systems. And if you put this classification on, it makes it very simple. Uh, if you want to predict the stochastic process, if you're going to use data f for probabilities, it has to be ergodic. That's just the definition of an ergodic system is where past probabilities and future probabilities are the same. And if it's, the system is non-ergodic, then future probabilities will differ from past probabilities and you can't make the decision. And mm. I think it should be recognized that this is not an epistemological system, this is a ontological question. And I would finally point out that if you believe in, in ergodic systems, which is what rational expectations is all about, uh, then the future is already predetermined by the fundamentals in the system today, and there's no role for government. Of course, just like uh, the heavenly bodies moving around the Earth, uh, astro astronomy is an ergodic system, and uh, astronomers can predict when the next solar eclipse will occur, and Congress cannot make a law uh, outlawing eclipses so that we have more sunshine to increase crop production. So I think the important thing here is to define uncertainty in a very technical sense. Don't blame mathematics. Uh, they're the message, that's the messenger. It's the message that you want to attack, not the messenger. So, can we see if there are any more questions first? Any more questions? Okay, while you're thinking about it, let's go to the people who want to answer it. Who wants to reply? Okay. Does this work? No. Let it fly this way. Okay. Uh, the, there are what I could not spell out. There are very different. Uncertainty is a huge area. Hmm? And I defined it negatively. Yeah? And it's not just about probabilities being known or not known. Yeah? There are stronger forms of uncertainty where you don't know the consequences hmm? or the alternatives. Hmm? And, the, and we also need to be able to deal with these situations. Hmm? And, uh, and it's actually, uh, in my studies, of we have studied, as I mentioned, uh, experts of decision theory. Hmm? And they often live in a kind of schizophrenic life. Yeah? They teach one thing, expected uh, value maximization, and when they make their own decisions, they do something totally, totally different. <coughs> so, and uh, that kind of schizophrenia is, seems to be dictated by the doctrine. There's, yeah, they're trained. And a second point I want to mention, that we use lots of mathematics in order to prove yeah, that a certain heuristic works in this situation. It's just uh, the kind of mathematics that it's used. Yeah? If you reduce mathematics to optimization theory, then yeah, that's not what uh, you can always do. But there are lexicographic structures yeah, that you can model, that you can simulate, that you can test and work out, yeah, which do lots of job, and they, uh, they model the time, the time, the sequence in time of decision making. So there's much more mathematics. There's no need to give up mathematics. I, I just wanted to respond to uh, uh, Paul's uh, query. Yes, I think the distinction, you, you see the key question is, uh, remember this beta t, is beta t plus one equal to beta t? If you assume that, you get the probability at the end, and you get an ergodic structure. If you assume 
that you pre-specify change, then you get an ergodic structure, obviously. Now assume, suppose that the regularities in the way the beta t's and zt's of go over time and they're local, they're contingent, and they're qualitative. That would immediately take away the ergodicity and yet preserve the possibility of using probabilistic mathematics and then the key question is actually how do you then take it to the data? That's the difficult thing. Because once you suppose that you can't write down the true model, you can't say that under the null hypothesis the model you wrote down is true. So in a sense I agree with you and the whole question is to what extent what we are proposing is really possible. That's a crucial open question. We know it's possible in the context of financial markets. We do know something. We certainly don't assume ergodicity and we agree with you 100%. We're very Keynesian. I mean, Keynes is our supreme hero with Hayek and Knight being very close, funnily enough. And I also agree with you that in terms of the state, the whole debate about the state is confused precisely because imperfect knowledge and fallibility are out of the equation. Once that comes in, then markets, first of all, become very important. In this theory, I would claim markets are basically unimportant. That's another paradox about this theory. The markets become important, much more important, and then the role of the state reappears. So yes, that's exactly our problem. Our problem is we made a basic assumption and we need to kind of rethink all of these concepts. Now we are a little bit behind. Now we lost a couple of years. <laughs> And we lost a couple of years in an interesting way. It's not that these ideas were not known in the early 80s, if I can say something. Ned Phelps and I published a book in 1983 which argued that this thing cannot be made epistemologically coherent. And I was a nobody, he was actually then somebody. It was completely ignored. Completely. Okay, Roger? Uh, just a few points. Uh, it, it's true that uh, if the world is stationary, which is when it's ergodic and so on, you, you, uh, in my discussion, there is more argument in favor, possibly in favor of rational expectation, although uh, Professor Friedman will disagree, but uh, it's certainly a case. Now, the second point I want to make is that uh, when you have rational expectation, clearly the government uh, uh, is no longer in charge of coordinating expectation, which is one of its possible roles in the economy. But it still may be the case that uh, government uh, intervention makes sense ev even with rational expectation. Uh, although it's true that uh, Ricardian equivalence and stuff like this uh, are related with the rational expectation hypothesis. Nancy. Uh, well, I was a little interested in um, a question I'm always interested in is where do these probabilities come from? And you want to know whether the probabilities are the same now as they were uh, before. Uh, but it seems to me that it's a, a one of the kind of um, modeling assumptions that Tony questions uh, and the use of mathematics, that you've got this mathematical tool of these probability theories and it's almost impossible to for an econometrician or an economist not to think that there's some underlying probabilistic data generating mechanism that you can represent uh, with uh, probability measures. And um, for the most part, there's very little defense of where on earth these probabilities come from. Of course, there are finite frequencies, right? uh, but the idea that, the, that, the, that you've got a, this very powerful tool of these uh, probabilistic data generating mechanisms um, that are gonna allow you to deal with the frequencies um, well, it seems to me it needs defense and that there's very little defense of it. Um, uh, and usually when it doesn't behave like a probability, one says the probabilities are changing rather than we're yeah. using the wrong tool. They don't come from anywhere. They don't come from anywhere. They are structures locally that keep changing. They don't come from anywhere. Why That's do you think problem. that? Why do you think the pro <laughs> that the, pro the structures are even probabilistic? You don't think they're deterministic as as they have been in con conventional physics. Now you think that they're probabilistic. Uh, I don't. And it's not that chaotic is the option. It's that you've got you're overusing a mathematical tool to represent the world uh, when you see uh, differences. Uh, what if you had the qualitative restrictions on the moments of the distributions? That we very f that's the question. If that's not possible, then we have to go to the narratives. No. You, oh, 
Okay, I can see lots of hands. Unfortunately, I've had the sign from above, well, actually over the side, telling me that time is up. So let me once more, well, let me thank the speakers for four excellent talks. Once again, thank them for their immense self-discipline. Thank you very much. <laughs>